When moving the solo shot two to a low wing aerobatic airplane, we found out that those kind of vibrations affected the tag differently. They were activating the triple tab feature and that was a problem. But solo shot had a workaround. You need a 2.0 version thumb drive indicated by the black plastic inside the plug. And it has to be totally blank. All you have to do is plug that blank drive into the USB port on a base before you turn it on or push any buttons. That should totally disable the triple tab feature in the tag. The lights on the tag will still respond to the vibration, but they won't be doing anything at the base. Because the tag's lights still react to the vibration, we have to make sure we start the recording before we start the motor, and then we end the recording after we shut the motor off. With the motor off, the tag's lights react normally, and you can see that you've either started or stopped the recording. This is also the first day that we were able to get full videos with the new version of the firmware that expands the vertical capacity of the solo shot. And we can see already that the solo shot is doing a better job of staying with the plane on takeoff, even though this one is a little quicker and climbs a little faster. Where it would lose the plane through the top of the frame before, it now keeps it in. I almost always do a snap roll on takeoff with a capable airplane, but the solo shot usually missed them before because I pull it up a little quicker. Now it catches it. And here I take the plane up pretty much straight up and the solo shot stays with it. It almost loses it but it's going much higher than it ever did before. But then when I pull it over into an inverted flat spin, it falls out the bottom of the frame. It catches up again because the flat spin is pretty slow, but then it loses it again, catches up later on near the ground. And here where I'm doing kind of a half pipe with a tumble at either end, the plane isn't climbing very far, but it still gets out of the frame. If Solo Shot can get some more speed out of the vertical tracking, they're going to solve a lot of these problems. Something else that I've noticed, and it's not so much a problem, it's just kind of odd, is that whenever you make a left turn in towards the field, the plane gets to the right side of the frame, but then as it gets closer, all of a sudden the zoom pulls back and it goes to the center of the frame. Like I said, it's not a big problem, it just seems kind of odd in the face of how centered the solo shot keeps the plane most other times. Next I'm going to pull the yak up into a slow loop, and you notice near the top of the loop that the plane's starting to get unstable because it's going so slowly, but the solo shot loses it, then catches up, and you can see here the plane's essentially falling. And it goes out the bottom of the frame, comes back in again. And that's that vertical tracking speed thing again. And here I'll make a pass that's pretty much wide open with the yak, and you see the horizontal tracking has no problem keeping up with the plane. And it stays almost exactly centered the whole time. The solo shot used to lose my 50cc edge when I pulled it up into a high hover, but now it stays almost centered all the time. And that again is a big improvement. I think it's important to point out that this newfound accuracy of the Solo Shot 2 also works when you don't do things so well. Notice when I bail out of this and make a hard turn, the Solo Shot keeps up with it. I think it's fair to say that while the Solo Shot 2 still needs to improve its vertical tracking speed, overall this has turned into a pretty good tool for recording your flights. And because they make most of these improvements in firmware updates, you can keep your solo shot up to date and it doesn't cost anything. Plus, you're going to have a hard time finding a friend that can handle a camcorder this smoothly and accurately without getting tired. <laughs>